Hey everybody, this is an unboxing of the Huawei P20 Pro. So unfortunately, I was unable to get the tri-light color. Instead, I got the blue, which I still think looks pretty good, but it doesn't look anywhere as sexy as that tri-light color that I demoed in New York uh, about a week ago. Still very nice though. I'm just glad I didn't get the gold because I don't like gold color phones. So I'll make this unboxing quick because I've already did a hands-on. So I'm just going to jump straight into a review. So pretty simple unboxing this time compared to the other packaging for the, um, like the Mate 10 Pro. So we have this charging brick that charges very fast speed, supercharge. Uh, Huawei calls it supercharge. It's uh, Huawei's proprietary fast charge technology. You have a USB-C cable. You must use this cable with this plug to get the fast charge speeds on this phone because this phone does not use the standard fast charging that other Android phones such as LG or Samsung devices use. So you have a earbud with a USB-C port because this phone doesn't have a headphone jack. So I think the retail unit actually comes with a case and some papers, you know, instructions and shit that I didn't get here because this is not a retail unit. This is a review unit given to me by the headquarters. So um, that might explain why there's no case. Let's get to my favorite part. Yeah, the blue is nice, but I think I like the black better and then I like the tri like best. So now let's get to the front. I believe there's a screen protector on there already. I believe there's a screen protector on here already. So, okay, so I'm gonna test this phone out and then jump straight to the review. Hey everybody, this is my full review of the Huawei P20 Pro. I'm gonna change up my style a little bit and start the video by going over the things I don't like about the phone first. This is partly influenced by Flossie Carter who always starts with the negatives. I think that's pretty funny. But also because so much has already been made about this phone, you already know, um, if you follow tech at all, you already know what's special about this phone. It's the three cameras on the back and the amazing low light photography. I've made a video about this just a couple days ago. So um, everybody knows why this phone is good. Let's talk about the little things that bug me about this phone. So if you are familiar with Huawei or Honor phones, you know that right now, this home screen I have does not look like a typical Huawei phone at all. That's because I have Nova Launcher installed on this phone to get um, get this kind of stock Android vibe. I like these uh, kind of material design icons better. I like to be able to swipe up to get my app drawer. I like to be able to swipe down to bring my notification shade. So um, I have Nova Launcher on here right now. And the reason why is because I don't like Huawei's own software, which is EMUI. So let me switch to it really quick to show you. Okay, I switched back to EMUN now. So this is how the phone, all Huawei phones look out of the box. Uh, to Huawei's credit, it's already cleaned this up a lot. It was very tacky even two years ago. But first of all, the phone um, by default doesn't have an app drawer. You have to go to settings to install it. And then once you have an app drawer, this is still the dated style where you press a button um, instead of swiping up like you do on other Android devices. And now you look at the icons, they're kind of that squircle, which um, uh, it's a combination of square and circle. It's it's inspired by iPhone icons, basically, iOS inspired. I don't like that. Um, I like the material design icons. And then you can't bring down notification shade unless you swipe from the top, because if you swipe from the middle, it brings up this uh, search in within the phone. So this is again, taken from iOS. So you see where I'm going with this? Chinese phone softwares, they, they copy Apple a little bit too much. This is the same stuff that you can find in Vivo devices. There are a couple of cool things that Huawei introduces with EMUI, such as say, for example, knuckle gestures. You do this and then to go into split screen mode. So that's pretty cool. But other than that, I, I just don't like EMUI that much. So I, that's why I use Nova Launcher. That's the beauty of Android. I can slap Nova Launcher on it and then make the phone feel almost like a stock Google, stock Android device. Okay, so I switched back to Nova Launcher now just to get this vibe that I like better. So um, even though EMUI, there's some redeeming qualities, just a lot of things are just overly done. Like in settings, for example, always on display, it is so hard to find. Like it's it's completely buried deep in here. In fact, you have to Google like always display information to see it and it's all the way buried inside password and all that. And this is one of the things I don't like. 
so always on display that's all it shows it'll show you the time battery date and notification icons from huawei's first party apps that means you won't see notification icons for instagram gmail whatsapp wechat any of the important stuff conversely on a samsung galaxy device which i don't have on me because i'm using the, that to record this video and always on display will show you an icon for whatever you have like say i have a new email it'll say gmail it'll have a gmail icon right here if i have a new whatsapp message it'll have a whatsapp message right there and i can so i can know i have something waiting for me another thing i don't like this chin is kind of unnecessary um for a phone that that goes for the notch design which you know it's its intent is to maximize screen to body ratio then why does there need to be a chin down below with a fingerprint reader on the back on the front i mean a fingerprint reader on the front feels a little bit outdated don't you think every other company samsung apple xiaomi vivo oneplus they've all done away with this fingerprint reader on the front they've either moved it to the back or got rid of it like apple or just have it under the display so this is a little bit outdated and feels a little bit like 2016 in fact if you look at the huawei mate 10 bottom bezel on the Mate 10 is actually slimmer than the bottom bezel of the P20 Pro because the Mate 10 doesn't have a fingerprint reader. So I just feel like this is a step backwards for design. Wouldn't this phone look even better? I like how this phone looks by the way, but wouldn't it look even better if it was like the Vivo design with a minimal chin? Vivo's chin is a little bit smaller, right? So Vivo's design looks even more immersive. So finally, the last thing I don't like about this phone is there is no micro SD card support. So this phone comes with 128 gigs of storage, which is enough for me, but it's not enough for everybody. Not having micro SD storage is like typical Apple shit. Apple does that because Apple likes to control everything, but you're a Google phone, so why do you not have micro SD card storage when everybody else does it? There's also no wireless charging in this phone which it's not a huge deal to me, but again, it's a slight negative, right? Because every other top Android phone has it right now. So that's it for all the negative stuff. Not a lot, actually. None of these are really deal breakers, considering even the software, I can fix it with Nova Launcher. But there's so much, so much to like about this phone. So now let's get to the good stuff. So first, let's talk build quality. Um, this is the blue color phone. If you saw my hands-on in New York, I tried out the Trilight and I like that color better, but this color still looks pretty good. I just think this is a very sexy looking phone, even if there's a notch, um, which obviously it's inspired by another device on my right right here, the iPhone 10. But even if you ignore the fact that this is kind of like not an original design up top, the rest of the phone feels very solid, very nice. The glass back feels very premium and the screen, kind of it doesn't curve like a samsung phone but still it's chamfered edges right here so it feels a little bit smoother compared to a more budget device such as the oneplus 5 or the vivo v9 these phones have screens that are a lot sharper right here right here i don't know if you can see you see that you can see very clearly where the screen ends so it feels a little bit sharper in the hand and this phone's plastic back feels a little bit cheap now, to be fair, this phone is half the price of the um, P20 Pro, so I'm not sure I should pull this comparison, but I'm just saying, the P20 Pro, it's a premium phone that is on par with the Apples and the Samsungs and the top LG flagships in terms of build quality. Like, you even look at the bottom of the port. Okay, this looks just like the iPhone 10 too. <laughs> but uh, you look at the bottom of the port, the speaker grill and the charger, it's completely aligned. You can't even say that about Samsung. And Samsung's um, like the second biggest tech company in the world and their phone don't even align down at the bottom. So I wanna talk about this notch really quick. I was an initial detractor of the notch too. When I reviewed the iPhone 10, I pointed out how it, it you know, it, it doesn't look good. But you know, I gotta admit I was wrong. The notch, it's actually necessary for now, at least until phone makers come up with, um, at least until the tech advances enough that phone makers can put the selfie camera underneath the display or have it pop up like the vivo apex but without you know all the mechanical challenges because the reason a notch is needed it's because it effectively helps you push up the status bar which is this thing right here up a little bit because think about it the status bar is actually very important on android phones because this is how we see notifications and then there's battery life and time and all that 
but the middle of the status the status bar is usually empty for example look at the huawei mate 10 the status bar right here you see that it only fills up information on the right and the left and the middle is just dead space so the notch effectively puts the selfie camera down here and then that basically put um pushes the status bar up or it gets uh, shrinks the phone down however you however you want to look at it but the point is that you do get a little bit more screen space when you use a notch so i'll give you an example really quick i'm gonna pull up instagram on both the mate 10 pro and the p20 so when you put the two phones side by side you see that instagram starts a little earlier than on the p20 pro than on the mate 10 right so you're effectively getting a little bit more screen because on a traditional phone there's this little roll that's wasted here with status now if you have a notch then this gets pushed up to you right here so a notch actually makes sense and to huawei's credit um not a lot of apps get in the way right now almost everything kind of works for instagram i'm very happy to report that Instagram stories actually fill up the whole screen. Look at it, it actually fills up around the notch. I just think it looks a little bit immersive when you do that. Um, on Vivo V9 or even the iPhone 10, Instagram stories does not fill up around the notch. So check this out. See, so on the Vivo V9, there's a very noticeable digital bezel right here because the video does not fill up the whole screen. Same thing on the iPhone 10. So on the iPhone 10, when you watch Instagram stories, there's so much wasted space. You have this entire black bar at the bottom and then right here. This is completely wasted space and the video doesn't feel that immersive to me. The point of an Instagram video is to, you know, have it fill up the entire display and just looks very immersive. I, like this looks definitely better, a little bit more immersive in my opinion. So interestingly, YouTube does come up with a digital bezel on youtube app though there is so right now i'm watching one of my videos um let's stretch it all the way out that's the most it'll go it will not fill up around the notch like on iphones and the vivo v9s so even though it's not original even though it gives apple fans like fuel um the point is i, I think the notch is necessary for now i sh i'm gonna stop complaining about the notch i'm gonna admit i was wrong and i'm gonna take the l and admit that apple was right the notch is a good design for now because the technology does not allow us to get rid of the selfie camera so this is the only way right now to maximize screen real estate now i just wish the stupid chin was in there imagine if the phone looked like this it would look pretty damn stunning so i've already explained why the camera is so awesome many times so i'll just go over it relatively quickly so first of all the npu that's found on the kirin 970 is still here and it can recognize things like plants so you right here you see immediately it picked up greenery it'll recognize text and human faces and animals and all that and i try it all the time and i'm still amazed even after using the may 10 for half a year now and using this phone for like a week five days i'm still amazed at how it, it really can tell the difference like i put it over food it'll tell me it's food i put it over a dog it'll tell me it's a dog so now this year as i already showed in new york the phone will actually change setting modes settings mode um, according to what it's looking at. So you bring it over to a person, it will turn, it will automatically go into bokeh mode. You bring it over to flowers, it will pump up the contrast. So these are all things called master AI that um, you can turn off if you want. If you don't like it, if you don't want, you know, the AI to meddle with your photos, just let me set my own shit. You can turn it off if you want, but I don't mind. I like it because I do think it helps me take better photos. So for example, in this video here, you'll see that as I pull the phone up towards the sun, it actually, the AI kicked in and then brightened up the dark part of the images. So the dynamic range is a little better. On other phones without AI, dynamic range, when you shoot under the sun, it's very difficult. So about that triple camera setup, you have a eight megapixel telephoto lens here, a 20 megapixel monochrome lens, and a 40 megapixel RGB lens. So if you use Huawei phones before, you know that Huawei's always had a dual camera setup with RGB and monochrome. What Huawei does is it pulls in light information from the monochrome lens, which is black and white, and fills that into the RGB lens so the photos will come out brighter. So the new camera this year, telephoto, allows you to get up to three times optical zoom. So this is three times lossless zoom. But with um, the additional AI processing and also pulling data from all three uh, cameras, the phone's able to do five times 
hybrid zoom, which, as you can see from some of the photo samples here, side by side with other devices, Huawei's the Huawei P20 Pro's five times hybrid zoom actually works, and it is a little bit more clear than photos on the Samsung Galaxy S9 or the iPhone 10 when you do the same five times zoom because those are digital zoom. So the reason Huawei put a 40 megapixel camera here isn't so you can take photos in 40 megapixel resolution because that's a bit overkill. Nobody needs photos that huge. The reason Huawei uses a 40 megapixel lens is because the phone uses a technology called pixel binning. What it does is it combines four pixels into one to get more light information and data, photo information like data. So that means Huawei put a 40 megapixel camera on here with the intent to use it as a 10 megapixel camera because it combines four pixels into one. I'll show you some samples right now. That low light photography looks so good. Check out this shot here. This is a pretty stunning shot. Check out the dynamic range is completely perfect. If you look at the same photo taken with the Samsung Galaxy S9 or other devices, you see that there's it's not as bright up here and then also it's a little bit overexposed where the light sources are, like right here down in this uh, little door and then also right here down this tunnel. So as I mentioned in my last video, the single best feature about this phone, in my opinion, it's this new AI stabilization that allows you to take long exposure shots um, without the need of a tripod. So I'll explain again, I already did in the other video, but basically long exposure shots uh, means a camera is leaving the shutter open longer. The reason it leaves the shutter open longer is to pull in more light information so the photo can appear brighter than the real life scene. But the problem with using long exposure shots is the phone needs to be completely still because if, while the shutter is open, if you even shake a little bit, the photo is going to be blurry. So that means up until this phone came out, you have to use a tripod or you have to put a phone still on a table and prop it up to, able, to be able to shoot long exposure shots. This is the first phone ever that allows you to shoot long exposure shots without a tripod. You can do a handheld and the photo won't come out blurry because Huawei's AI is so smart, it will optically, uh, not, uh, not optically actually, Huawei's AI was so smart, it will digitally stabilize the image in post-processing. And as I already showed you, the phone, this phone's able to basically shoot in almost pitch dark conditions and churn out images that are much brighter than any other phone is capable of. I'll show you more, more examples right now of, of the low light photography. It's, it's just stunning. So right here, this is an alley shot. The alley is really dark in real life, but I was able to shoot it like it's like almost as if the sun is still out. Look at how bright it is. Look at the details on the street. So now look at the same shot taken on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Now keep in mind, the Galaxy S9, it's already one of the very best low light shooters out there. So this image is already very damn good and it still doesn't compare to the Huawei P20 Pro's image. If you take the same picture of the iPhone 10, it's, it's a joke, it's not even a comparison. So I'll show you another example. This image is in my living room. I took this, in the evening with no lights on. So it was basically a completely dark situation and check out how much light it pulled in. I shot this using the long exposure mode. Now with the iPhone 10, check out the same image. You can't see shit, completely dark. So the ability to shoot photos in the dark, it's amazing and it's my absolute favorite feature. The camera overall is just a joy to use. While I overhaul the camera software, so now you swipe left and right to jump between modes. So this is night mode. This is that long exposure mode I was talking about. You have portrait, which is basically bokeh. It is what it is. It's it's um, very solid, not quite iPhone 10 level. So you have normal photo, video. You're able to shoot photo, photo uh, videos in 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second with really good image stabilization. So check out this video right here. I'm walking really fast and it's completely stable and details are good too. But that's the only a resolution you can shoot at. That's the max resolution you can shoot at with stabilization. If you go up to 4K resolution, the video becomes jerky and kind of almost unwatchable. It's quite sad that uh, for phones whose camera is this good, the video capability actually, it's not quite up to par. So now you have a pro mode, you can adjust settings, ISO, all that. So if you like to play around photography, this is fun. 
and you have more which are all these shooting modes such as light painting that's um one of my favorite modes of Huawei phone. So you're able to shoot photos with like the light trails, like what you see right here. Pretty cool. Again, you can't really do these type of shots on any other phone except the Huawei, um, Huawei Mate 10 or P20 Pro or, you know, P9, whatever Huawei phones basically. So you might notice that um, I'm not using any Android navigation buttons. That's because Huawei gives you an option to use this button to get around Android. So I'll show you how it works. So um, basically you tap once to go back you long press to go home and then to bring up recent apps you just swipe on it so it's pretty intuitive i quite like it i just feel like if you're gonna have this giant ass shin at the bottom then i don't want navigation up at the top it annoys me so i'm gonna use this button to get around the fingerprint reader as if i need to talk about it's super fast huawei has probably the best fingerprint reader in the business and this phone also has face unlock that's reasonably fast too not as fast as the oneplus 5t but uh definitely usable also one more thing about the notch this phone has stereo speakers too the earpiece right here it's also a speaker so we gotta do that video test that you know what i'm gonna look at right now so this is an oled panel too um 6.1 inch oled panel with a at an 18.7 by 9 aspect ratio it's a beautiful oled panel from samsung it doesn't get quite as bright it doesn't get quite as bright as the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, so it's not the best panel at all. Um, it's not the best panel in the entire market, but it's like, you know, one of the best is like the second or third best maybe. So this fifty percent volume. Now let's go up to a hundred percent. See, so dual speakers. I'm covering the speaker grill now, and sound is coming out here. And the sound is uh, very lo loud, very full. This is a good speaker. Not quite as good as the speaker on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. In my opinion, that speaker gets even a little bit more full with bass. But this is good. And the screen looks good. So the chipset inside is Kirin 970 with 6 gigs of RAM. That's the exact same setup as on the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. So performance is about the same. You might remember me calling the Huawei Mate 10 Pro the most powerful phone I've used. So, um, but this was back in late last year. And you know, smartphone moves so fast nowadays that this chipset is now not the most powerful anymore. The Samsung Galaxy S9 Snapdragon 845 is more powerful, but you can't really tell the difference in real life. You can only tell the difference when you're running benchmarks or if you're editing videos in power director which i actually do so when i'm editing video now i see that it runs a little bit smoother a little bit more faster on the samsung galaxy s9 plus than on the huawei p20 uh, if you care about benchmarks i ran the benchmarks so let me sh show you really quick on geekbench it scored a 1897 with 6639 multi-core and that sound you just heard earlier is from google assistant because i actually turned it on by swiping up i also ran pc bench too i have to gra i grabbed the screenshot because pc bench has a bug that doesn't let you see your score ironically so on pc bench it scored a 7183 so very impressive this is among the top again not quite on par with the samsung galaxy s9 plus but definitely top three or four phones on the market right now so that's it for my review wow it's just shit went 25 minutes it's already so long i'm sorry i like this phone very much i'm gonna make it my daily driver i think that because this phone is a little bit cheaper than the iphone 10 and samsung galaxy s9 plus it makes it a really good flagship to consider because this phone is the absolute best in two areas you have battery life and camera and when you're shooting in the dark like low life photography basically so these are two of the most important areas the third most important area to me is display and this display while not the best is still very good so two out of three areas this phone is the best there's not much more to say i like this phone a lot i've always been a fan of huawei phones and this is another win for huawei thanks for watching